Wednesday the 2nd of June and I'm just chilling on the bed. It's about, I think it's about 20 to 12. I've been up, up since about half seven. Um, got ready, did some washing. And now I've just come up to charge my phone and watch a bit of YouTube. Um, while my phone's on the phone um, to work because I've got a meeting on the phone. That's okay. Okay, do that. So, I haven't vlogged um, for a few days. I started vlogging again um, just to uh, just to start vlogging again, basically. Um, and I said that I would fill you in about what happened um, on the court date, the Wednesday, the 21st of April. So, um, yeah, we got there. There was quite a few people there. Um, so I think we were allowed seven because we had to give names because of COVID. You've only allowed so many in the courtroom. And it turns out there was nine there, which, which is great for us because, you know, it shows like we've got so much support and, it, you know, it was all family. Um, so I don't think the courts were happy about it, but they allowed it in the end, so that was really good. Uh, so we were taken into a, um, like a vulnerable um, room. I don't know what it's called. Um, so we kept, they kept coming, like the barristers and the police and the CPS kept coming into us and asking if, they could speak to us a minute. We kept going into the room and they kept talking us through what we're gonna, you know, what was gonna happen, um, and you know when we were gonna go in because of COVID. It's just, you know, there's only so many people um, allowed in there, and they have to work out exactly where you're gonna be sitting because they have to separate everyone. Um, She's so noisy, Rocky. Uh, the last time, so we were pulled out of the room about five times. The last time we were pulled, no, sorry, the fourth time we were pulled out, um, just me and Matthew, and the barrister said the judge has asked if the victim support
witness box um, so we could read his statement. Um, so it started off with our barrister explaining exactly what had happened to Isabel on the day, um, what the guy had done. There was some information that we'd never even heard about. Um, they decided that they didn't need to watch the footage of the accident, which had been caught on CCTV and a dash cam, um, because the judge had watched it beforehand, um, and they just they didn't see a reason why we would need to see it. We didn't want to see it anyway, so we would have had to go out the room, um, the courtroom, when they showed the video, and it, they just decided not to do that. Um, our barrister was absolutely rubbish, we, we just thought, he, I don't even know why he got out of bed that day, he was absolutely crap. Um, he had warned us before we went in that it could be a suspended sentence, which we were, which we were shocked about. Um, didn't believe it would be, um, and my husband had said so, no prison time. And the barrister was like, no, no in the eyes of the law that is still a prison sentence no it's not a prison sentence because you get to go home so it wasn't a great start um and then the defendant's solicitor um came on video call she wasn't even in the room she spoke about how great this guy was for about 20 minutes 20 30 minutes um, how he drives over a hundred miles to babysit for his family's children. Well, I hope he wasn't doing that during COVID because you weren't allowed. So I don't even know why they, they decided to bring that up. But um, he attends the church and he does charity work. And I just, I just didn't want to listen. You know, after hearing that, the, the judge started talking. Didn't want to tell the guy off didn't raise his voice at him just the only thing he did say was if it wasn't for your actions we would we wouldn't all be here obviously not that's just obvious but that's the only negative sort of thing that he said to the guy the rest of it he basically copied exactly what the defendant's solicitor had said so you have to hear it twice um, he also said that the defendant had written a letter to us. We've never seen this letter. He read out a couple of lines just saying how sorry he was. But he, had, he didn't even look at us to say sorry. The guy didn't say a bloody word through the whole thing. He had a mask on, so he was hiding behind his mask. Didn't need the mask on because he was in a box. But kept his mask on so we couldn't see his full face. Obviously, we know what he looks like now because his face was in the paper. But he just had this constant frowny look on his face there was no emotion there he didn't change his emotions at all nothing obviously Matthew read out the redacted copy which of his um, victim impact statement it didn't flow properly I'd, I was in absolute tears I was shaking um, and then after it all when the judge finally said I'm going to give you a suspended sentence. My husband got up, threw his victim impact statement on the floor and basically said, this is a shit show and stormed out. And I'm not surprised he did that because it was awful. You know, when he wrote the victim impact statement, he was told to not vilify the defendant and to not tell the judge how to do his job and that's exactly what you know he stayed away from that he wrote how you know Isabel's death had impacted me Matthew Marcus the grandparents the whole family so um yeah he stormed out um his mum followed and his um brother and his sisters and sister-in-law me, Marcus, my mum and stepdad stayed in the room because uh, we were on the other side. I wanted to hear all of it. Um, the judge then said that he wouldn't impose a fine or impose compensation, you know, get the guy to give us any compensation because it would have a financial impact on the defendant. 
Um, and he decided not to send him to prison, give him a prison sentence, because that would also um, have an impact on the defendant's family, so his wife and children, which I just found unbelievable, because if that's the case, no one would go to prison. You know, he, he killed our daughter. He was speeding. He was doing 47 miles an hour on impact down a 30 mile an hour road past two schools and a park um, in a residential area um, coming up to a crossing as well um, Isabel was with two friends so it's not like she was on her own he would have seen three children and they then tried to blame Isabel for uh, running out behind a van because apparently over the other side of the road a white van had gone past we'd never heard this before no one's ever mentioned this to us the first time we'd heard it but we know for a fact that she had looked over her shoulder three times before she crossed so how in that time had the guy not seen her i do not know um he only started to break once he'd hit isabel and he ended up over the other side of the road um towards oncoming traffic so i believe that's that's why he didn't you know didn't just you know drive off because he couldn't um, also, the judge had said that the defendant had done everything he could for Isabel. No, he didn't. He got out of his car, he lay on the floor and he held his arms in the air. And then we'd heard that he'd said that he'd had a seizure. You can't have a seizure and hold your arms in the air and actually walk out of the car and lie on the floor and hold your hands in the air. No, you can't. Um, he hadn't gone over to Isabel at all. Um, thankfully, a off-duty nurse um, was close I don't know whether she was in a car or she was walking but she attended to Isabel and she um, attempted CPR on her the whole time until the paramedics arrived which was about 15-20 minutes I think um, then after he'd said no fine no prison sentence no compensation he then turned round and said, is that it? And our barrister had to remind the judge that he was to impose a ban on the defendant, a driving ban. The judge had forgotten. So the judge was like, oh, okay, uh, 15 months disqualification, which is the minimum he could have given him. Usually you hear, you know, with drivers, exactly the same situation, three years you usually hear. He got 15 months and 120 hours um, unpaid work he's got to do over two years. He's got two years to do it, so it's how's that going to affect him? A few hours, you know, every weekend, he'll soon get it done. So, yeah, once we'd left the courtroom, our police liaison officer basically said that he was shocked, but to try and move on, try and put it past us no no that ain't gonna happen it's not happened we have appealed we want his sentence to be changed we we us the family and our community are just outraged by this outcome it is just disgusting how he got to go home to his family on that day then also, as the judge, just before the judge left the room and we had to stand while he left, which was so annoying, I just wanted to stay sat down, but I stood up. He said, uh, you let the defendant go. So they opened the door before we could go to let him go. And our barrister said, no, take the defendant back in the room and let the Boschel family leave first. So we nearly left at the same time as him. As I walked past the box, I looked at him, and if that was me, I would have stood up and I would have said, I am so sorry. He didn't even look at me. His friend did, and his friend didn't apologize for him, didn't say nothing. He just didn't want to look at me. It was just an absolute joke the whole day. It really was, and We've complained about the judge, 
about the way he was with us. There was no compassion or anything. Um, it completely vilified us, the whole our whole family and Isabel. And yeah, that that is what happened. And now we've set up a petition on um, change.org. So justice for Isabel Boschel, um, or justice for Isabel. And we've got nearly 2,500 signatures to try and change the guy's sentence. But we also, we want to try and keep getting these signatures so we can try and take it to the government to change the sentencing. Because even by death by drink, even the death by dangerous driving sentence, you could still potentially walk free. And I just don't get that. You've taken a life. You've taken somebody's life. And you get to go home. It's just unbelievable. Um, I'm, I'm surprised that I've been able to do this without getting upset. But I think it's sometimes anger stops me from getting upset. So... You know, I'll have to keep you informed of what happens after this. Um, I don't know whether the appeal is going to go through or if it will be declined. It hasn't as yet. And it was sent off about two, three weeks ago. Um, yeah. It looks like Isabel's getting the blame for it all now, even though she did absolutely nothing wrong. She was crossing the road. She checked three times before she walked out. And her friends had already crossed. So she was being cautious. And in her being cautious, she lost her life. If she'd run out with her friends, she would have got across the road before he came along. But she was very cautious. I showed her how to cross the road. And that is what she did. So, I'm, I'm actually going into work today. Uh, this is the first time that I've gone in, not, not to actually work, but to discuss going back and to see everyone. And uh, I'm a bit worried about it. Um, I don't like getting upset in front of people, which I, that it is to be expected. I know for a fact they are, are going to know that I'm going to get upset. But I just don't want to. I just, I've, I've no idea how I'm going to be, but... I've got a feeling as soon as I go to the door, I'm going to burst into tears. Um, I'm going to try and go and get them some goodies, some bickies and things to take in with me. Uh, yeah. Um, two o'clock I'm going in. So I'll be leaving here about about 20 past one. So I can pop into Aldi on the way, which is next door. That's another thing. I haven't been back in that Aldi. I've been to other rowdies um, since, which I was actually okay with because if you've watched my other vid videos, excuse me, um, that's where I was when I found out that Isabel had been in this accident. I was actually at the end of shopping. Um, but yeah, I haven't been to this one since uh, the last time I went in there was 21st of October and her accident was the 22nd. I can remember what I bought. I bought butter, I think I bought a pack of noodles and strawberries for Isabel. Um, so yeah, I'm going to pop in there on the way because it's next door to work and I'll have to fill you in when I get back. So um, yeah. We'll see you guys later.